Hey gang, East Coast Lumberjack here. And today in the shop, or this week, I've got a few repair projects. So I want to show you them because they've, they've got some, uh, there's some good examples here of fixing axes. So, um, mostly this week I'm going to look at, we're going to look at tightening an axe head that's come loose, which should be a very common thing for people to, to learn. And the other one is replacing a handle. So we'll be pulling a handle out of the axis. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, be sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, so I've got this little axe box here with axes in it. Actually, even now, I probably should show you that. It's, uh, it's a pretty neat uh, rig. So this, this is what we call, this is an axe box. Okay, and we make it for our competition axes. And if you look inside of it, you'll see that there's uh, the axes lay in here. There's um, teardropped shaped holes here that the axe head slide into. And those holes are set that the plywood set up high enough that when the axe head sits down in there, they can't touch the bottom. So they're just suspended inside your axe box. So it's a really safe place to uh, store and transport really sharp axes, which is what we have here. So, I'm going to put you back. You can watch here. I'm going to plug in because I'm almost dead. Foam battery <laughs> is almost dead. There we go. Okay, now I want to bring it down a little bit here. Okay, so what we have here this is a practice axe. Now, there's a few things that we're talking about grinding right now, as you know, and we've covered a couple of videos on grinding. This is a china head. Now, I want to show you what it looks like before and after. So, I happen to have one right here, still in the paper. And this thing's for sale. Came from Tuatai Axes down in Masterton, New Zealand. And of course they send them all wrapped like this in, in uh, paper. That's what keeps them safe. But when you unwrap them, as you'll see here, they are... This one's got a lot of sticky on it because it's the paper is really sticking to it. But you can see here, it's a it's just a straight ground axe. Jeez, I've never had paper stick like this. So there it is here, and you'll see it's it's just a it's a flat axe. So from the from the eye out here, right up to the edge, it's flat. Okay, goes straight out. So what happens is when you use this axe in wood, all this metal here drags in the wood okay it drags in the wood and as the axe goes in of course it, it fetches up so what we do and I didn't show this yet on my videos but I'm going to cover it eventually is we actually grind out wings so we take out a bunch of metal here so it doesn't drag and a bunch of metal here so we don't mess around along here with the chopping edge we just we do it back here and then in okay on the sides and if you take that out there's a lot less metal it's actually makes almost a V in the middle here there's a lot less metal dragging in the wood the next thing we do is is when we put a bevel on the edge of it we create what we call a bust okay and the bust when the when the axe bevel goes in the wood the last place it touches is here and actually from this bust back to here you want it actually hollowed out so if you lay a straight edge along it, you'll see that there's light, okay? So really, this is touching, and then this touches, because it's hollowed out in here. So we haven't talked much about that, but I am going to talk about it and show you it. So this is just a really good example to show you what's going on there. And pl placing a straight edge on your axe will tell you what's going on there, okay? So that's flat right out to the edge. Okay, so it's, uh, we know it's a flat ground axe from here to here. Now, this one here will be the same. 
But you'll see, now I ground this out for her, for the student that this is, and you'll see that I've got these wings uh, ground out of it, okay? So one there and one there. So there's less metal in here dragging in the wood. Now the other thing I didn't do was actually hollow out this. This is a practice axe, okay? So you don't want to put a pile of time in grinding it. It only costs about whatever, 150 bucks or $200. So it's under $200 for this axe. So you're not going to put a ton of time and effort into this thing unless you actually plan on using it to chop wood uh, in competitively, like in, in a competition. So this is just used for practice. So I did this just to show the students what I'm capable of, what I can do. I can grind these these wings out, and uh, and then of course I put a I put an edge on, on it out here, a bevel. So what's happened is if you look, you can can you hear that? Okay, you can see the head wobbling up and down. Okay, so it's loose, and that's why we pin them. So when this, what happens is they'll use this axe in a competition, or actually this is a practice axe. So she's been practicing with this, and then over time it gets loose. Okay, so the the uh, wood in this dried out a little bit more, and now we've got a wobble in it. So there's two things we can do. Okay, the first thing you can do is take an old file, now, and I wouldn't recommend this. I'm gonna show you the preferred way to tighten up a loose ax, okay? But a lot of people, now, what a lot of guys do, and this is a real pet peeve of the old East Coast Lumberjack, do not stick this thing in a bucket of water. <laughs> I was down at the, uh, in Moncton yesterday, down for the, uh, there's, there, we're having a, a wild axe throwing championship this year in, in Halifax and of course they had tryouts for this so I went down throwing the axe yesterday and uh, a lot of fun seeing the old guys Roger McPhee and all my buddies um, but anyways right there in the axe throwing league so the timber lounge in Moncton they had a bucket of water and of course it's for their throwing axes and when they get loose they stick them in that bucket of water and for a guy that's fussy about handles and axes that is a huge no-no of course, what it does, it causes the wood to swell, and of course it becomes tight again. But when it dries out the next time, it'll get even smaller. So you never solve your problem by putting these things in a bucket of water. You just wind up doing it over and over, and you just keep putting the Band-Aid on over and over again. Okay, so that's a huge pet peeve of the old East Coast Lumberjack. Do not soak your axe head in a bucket of water. So, there's a better way. Okay, there's a more professional way, and we're going to show it to you. So, um, what I would do first of all, see these are pins, so I'm going to knock that pin out. Okay, and I'll actually I'll try to show you what's going on here, if I can. My back is up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So the first thing I do is I'm going to tap. I'm going to tap this pin out. So I need my hammer. I need it's a good usually what I use if I can find it here I have an Ardox nail <laughs> of course it could be anywhere on my bench because I've been doing lots of other stuff but I usually use I'll get another one I have one up here Okay, so I usually use an Ardox nail, and I just set it on that little pin, and tap it down. Okay, so the Ardox nail goes down through, and you can see the pin coming out the other side. Okay, and it feels relatively loose, but it's not quite loose enough, so I'm just going to tap it a little bit more. There it goes. So the pin's out, nail's out, and it's a spring pin, okay, so it's a little, it's a little spring pin. So we'll set that here in the bench. Now, so I took, I took the pin out, and you can hear that that's pretty loose. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it in the vise, and we're going to take that wedge out. Actually, maybe, maybe if I do it this way, you can actually see it happen. 
let's try this. So I've got my rubber jaws on. Okay, make, make, always make sure your axis is, is good and tight. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this tool here, and, it, and all it is, it's just, it's really just a, a sharp, okay, comes to a, a bit of a point. I'm going to put that in here, pound it in here, in the, and I'm, I'm, we basically just want to pry this wedge out. Okay, so it's not, it's not quite coming. So, I'm going to see if I can wiggle that wedge back and forth. Okay, and I can't, you see, see how it came right there? Okay. So, it wants to come out. Right there, okay? You see that? Once that baby there is out, we're laughing. So just get a pair of pliers, hook onto it, bingo. Okay, so the wedge is out. One, once you get a little piece of it out, the rest of it will come, okay? You can just work the rest of it out, no problem. Just put your, your screwdriver in. Right there's another one. Okay, look at that. So, as you see, here's the wedge, all in my hand. So if you don't glue it, <laughs> that's another reason why I don't glue my wedges. If you don't glue it, the whole wedge will come out right in your hand. So now, all we're going to do, we're going to make sure it's on nice and snug, okay? So, did you see how smoothly that came out? Okay, and you can see how it's fetching up along the bottom. So all I'm going to do is smooth. There's a little bit of a ridge right here. Just a little bit. All we want to do is fetch it up tight down there. So I'll take my rasp and smooth that out. I'm just going to smooth that little lip off. Right around there. And then I'm just going to tap that back on just so it's over that and snugs up nice at the bottom. Okay. Now, we're out a little bit here at the top, but we're snug at the bottom. I don't know if that'll go more. Then we'll take a new wedge, so it's, it's up just a little bit proud, we're going to take a new wedge, and we're going to pound it in there. Now, this one, see if I can get one that's a little, has a little bit more tape, uh, there, a little bit more aggressive taper. Okay, so I want one with a little bit more aggressive taper, because I've already got a big hole here, a big gap. There. And now, we're going to drive this one home. Now, so there it is. Nice and snug. Okay. Axe head is really tight. If... The reason this is better, okay, this is superior to doing it any other way, to the water in the bucket, to pounding it down again, the wood is as dry as it's going to be. It's shrunk a lot. So if you wedge it now, it can't come loose. The odds of it coming loose again is pretty flippin' slim, okay, because the handle's dried out, it's fetched up at the bottom, you've just pounded it in as far as you can get at the top, and, I'm, and I'll beat that a little bit more. And I'm going to put a new hole and put the put the uh, pin back in it. Okay. So just to make sure it's in there as good as you can get it, tight as it'll go.
okay so I got it a little bit farther in there okay so that big wedge you can see how much of it's in there now we've really hammered that in so all I do now is take the bandsaw I'm gonna clean that off right in the bandsaw much wider that wedge is so that's really tight okay and she should never have to worry about this again so all I'll do now I'll put my drill bit in that's the right size for this hole it's just a whisker smaller because then that'll hold the the uh, spring pin nice and tight and the other key from the old East Coast Lumberjack. Don't try to drill the whole way through. The odds of you lining up perfect and hitting that other side is next to nil. Speaking from experience. <laughs> so now what I do, go part way through one side, part way through the other. And then what they'll do, they'll meet up in the middle. And when they meet up, it comes through every time okay so obviously i'm talking from a guy that's tried it <laughs> and missed that hole on the other side then when you try to get your spring pin in it fetches up in the metal on the other side you wind up mushrooming the, the spring pin on this side if you do it this way it goes the whole way through and seats in there beautifully okay both sides so there how long was that not even 10 minutes and it's tight as a drum okay so now the other thing I might do is take my uh, file and actually just smooth that off from the top sometimes I I'll take my exacto knife that's a little bit too much blade and then I'll just round this part of the eye okay cuz cuz we have a proud hang so sometimes these uh, these edges of your axe or the wedge will catch on stuff and give you a little gouge so we just round the corners off like this with a knife there okay so I just round the corners off and that way it won't catch on anything okay so I mean I, I could it's a practice axe if it was a comp axe I'd probably clean that up really nice I've got a uh, grinder here in the bench I, I can sand it off a little bit like that just to make it nice and smooth so there there's one axe repaired So that's taking that's taking a loose axe a loose axe head and fixing it okay that's the proper way to do it so it's, it's nice and tight that shouldn't bother again now busted axe handle so this this thing's coming out now where it broke it broke right here halfway down and there's a piece coming off this way as you can see and there's a piece this way so okay and I can feel a little a little depression right here in the handle okay so what's happened is somebody's missed the, the wood and hit here now this typically happens if you're chopping wood doesn't matter whether it's with a, a, a racing axe or any other kind of axe about pole axe you always want to clean the wood out closest to you. So wherever you're standing, if you're standing upright and you're chopping a tree, get the wood that's nearest to you and clean it out before you reach across to the fire wood. Same as when you're chopping below your feet. Clean out the wood at the top of your block before you reach to the bottom of the block. Because if you reach to the bottom and there's still wood there, if your axe head penetrates deeper than what the wood that's left there, you're going to hit that on the wood and you're going to do exactly what is showing right here okay that that bust okay so 
Same thing again. So how do we take this out? I'm going to show you really quickly how you remove an axe head. Okay, that's how we're going to finish off. So, same thing. It's pinned. This is a competition axe. So, uh, all comp axes have to be pinned. So we'll take our same little Ardox nail. Uh, three inch Ardox nail, just so you know. We'll start this. Just tap a little bit. And of course, that little pin starts coming out the other side. Like that. Okay, so there's the pin. Look at these split. So the, the pin is out. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put, put our soft uh, rubber jaws on. Okay, and I'll, and I'll put you down so you can watch this. Okay, now where it's a compact, you, you got to watch the edge. Okay, because number one, it's sharp. You don't want to ruin the axe. And also, <laughs> you don't want to ruin yourself. <laughs> so, here we are. Let's come down here so we can see what's happening. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out my, my small drill that I just used to put the pin in. And I'm going to take a, a drill that's about the same size as the wedge. Okay, and all I'm going to do is drill along my wedge. Start at the very back. And then come out. Come out all about the width of your width of your driller a little more. And do it again. And you're going to go the whole way along, do the same thing, okay? So we're just drilling out our wedge. Okay, now we all know that that hole goes down in there and it gets, it gets uh, narrower at the bottom. So as long as we're as wide as the wedge up top, you know you're going to get the wood at the bottom. So then all we need, we need either this tool or a flat uh, screwdriver. And you're going to put it in here and, nope, oh, I need a little bit tighter. And we're going to bend that wedge out. Okay. Now that one, this is slipping on it. Try this way too. Nope. So I need something that's going to grab a little bit more. So I'll use I'll use my screwdriver. Just pound it in. And see that I bend it a little bit, and it pops that wedge right out. Okay. And then once you get one piece out, all you got to do is go down through the axe eye, and it'll pop the rest of them out. There's second one. Third one. Well, let me have to start from this end. There we go. Once it gives a little bit like that, you're all set. Okay, so there's that one. Now, I, I used a hickory wedge in that. I knew it was a little bit tighter. You could tell by the drill when it was screeching coming out of there. So now there may be a little bit left up here. All you can do is just make sure you get that out too. There. At least just loosen it. So now that that's out, okay, now that that's out and it's still fairly tight on there, all we need to do now is get our axe drift. Okay, so, so here's our axe drift. It's just basically a chunk of metal, about uh, half inch wide. It's about inch and three quarters long. Okay, and we're going to set that on the eye like this and give it a tap, the hammer. Okay, now as you tap it, see what happens? It starts, it starts coming down. 
Now just tap it along. Almost out. Just got to wiggle it a little bit more. There. Now, watch back up here just for a second. Now, if, if this was a good handle, you can see I haven't bothered that very much. Okay, there's a few little scrapes inside there where I went a little bit deeper. There's a little bit more of the wedge here. So what I, what I could do, if this, if this wasn't a busted handle and you just want to swap it out, you could do that. Okay, so see there's the rest of that wedge right here from this side. Okay, and if I look through, there's a little bit more wedge right here. See that at the bottom? So I do the same thing. I just get my screwdriver and pop that out of there. So right now, if you look at that, okay, I could, I could put, if that was a good handle, I could pop it right back in again, use it another axe if I wanted to. But this one's broken, as you can see. So it's, uh, not sash, it's still fairly tough. But that's, that's destined for the fireplace, so, or the, uh, the, the furnace. So that's this week, that's uh, tightening up an axe head. And removing an axe head okay so now what I'm gonna do see the other thing about this I'm gonna show you there's a couple little dings out here okay if you can see them right here there's a little ding there this is what we call them dings okay so there's a little ripple here in the blade and there's a couple here okay there's another one right right here okay so I'm now if you look at this axe you can see from two a tie there's my pilot hole Okay, and we've been talking about grinding the last few weeks. So there's a pilot hole in this one, and a little pilot hole here. So I will go out and take my belt sander, and I will show you how I'm going to re-edge this axe. Okay, so I want it out of the uh, of the axe handle, so it'll go my axe filing jig, and then I can pop this in. So I'll just put this back in the axe box like this. And I have one more, okay? So this is another one. You can see the ding in it right there, very pronouncedly, okay, right here. Okay, so I need to regrind that one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pop this handle out. Um, ooh. This handle's not broken. I thought there was two handles broken. Maybe. This one is not busted. Maybe it's the other one. Maybe, maybe the other one I tightened it. No, it wasn't. I can't. I know it wasn't. No, it's nice. Okay. No problem. So this one here, it's been uh, it's been drilled out. We'll put a little bit more of a of an edge on this one. So it's got pilot holes, and that's my pilot hole. You can see on both sides there, there, and there. So the last time this was ground, it was ground by yours truly. But the uh, the handle's fine in it. And the, the wedge is really is is nice and tight. So what I will do is I will leave this head in And I'll see if I can't uh, grind this one here just in the vise outside there Okay, now the only problem with doing this in a vise now is you only have this back a little bit for the vise to hold on to Okay, so I'm going to mount that in the vise here And what happens is sometimes you'll get some wiggle out here at the tip so you got to try to get it as tight as you can. You're putting a lot of stress on your vise as well, so it really tests your vise how tough it is. Um, but if I can do that, then I'll just put my pilot hole here. I'll grind that out, and uh, we'll show you that one. So we got three more axes to, uh, to do some grinding on out in the... Two more axes to do some grinding on in the shop. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. There's lots more good stuff coming up. East Coast Lumberjack signing off.